And we're back on The Fowler Show. As we told you, we're coming to you live from the DNC, the Democratic National Convention in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. We're joined by the one and only progressive lioness. She's a badass. We love her here on The Fowler Show. Uh, Jan Chikowski, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here, you know, it's a once in a lifetime thing. So tell me, this is day four. It's been a long couple of days. I'm pretty sure you are wiped out tired. But what is the, what was the most impactful moment of this convention for you? You know, every night I thought, this is the best. It can't get any better <laughs> than that. And every night it gets better. I mean, obviously, last night, the uh, handover from the most eloquent, thoughtful, decent president we've had um, to Hillary Clinton on stage was such a moving, incredible moment. Um, you know, I know Barack Obama from Chicago and you know, was involved in his first race for state senate. Wow. So um, it's really um, a, a little bittersweet to have him walk off the, uh, off the stage. But as a woman who has worked for women's empowerment for literally decades and decades, this is a thrilling moment. And you have noticed, haven't you, that they both are Chicago people. Yeah, but, listen, yeah. I, we're from, I'm from Chicago, so I, I know it. It's yeah, a, I'm I mean, from Evanston, so yeah. it's, just a, it's in the water. Okay. It's in the water. Yeah, Congress you're from my town, huh? <laughs> I am, okay. um, Howard Street. Okay. Like, um, now tell me, so we'll leave here on Thursday. Well, first, before we get into what happens next, right, let's have a conversation, a very a conversation about what was the most impactful speech at this convention. Obviously, there's a couple that are top my list. What tops your list? All right, impactful. I mean, I think it was some, Bernie played a very important role um, for going forward. Both, I think, his speech, where he not only fully embraced Hillary Clinton, uh, gave credibility to her positions now on the issues, but said not voting is not an option. And that's important. And then putting her name in, in nomination. Now, I know, I, I understand there's some controversy about Bill Clinton's speech, but I thought it was a real love letter to his wife and very clear about her consistency and, from I mean, day one. I got to tell you, there's something about that relationship. It might not, it's not, I wouldn't, it's definitely not your Ozzy and Harriet, but there's definitely something that's a symbiotic thing that Hillary and Bill have for each other that makes their relationship work and also has made them this sort of power couple in American politics. No, there's a connection, no question about it. People who think it's just somehow for, for politics or for personal advancement or something, that's just not true. There's enormous energy, and that's valid between the, uh, between the two of them. I, I definitely, I thought Tim Kaine did, so, may have surprised some people. They don't know him, he introduced himself. Yeah, and the himself. breaking news, the breaking news is he always travels with the harmonica. Did you hear that? He, no. <laughs> <laughs> But it is true, they broke you know, his day that no matter what, he always has a harmonica. I'm not sure why. But, but the, thing about, the thing about Tim Kaine is that even as he's attacking Donald Trump, there's such a sweetness about the man. You know, and, and I think the contrast, the decency gap, if you will, between our leaders and Donald Trump and the bitterness and the anger that was presented in, in Cleveland. If we don't get a great bump, I will be shot. The other, the other starring role was Michelle Obama. Oh yeah. I mean, oh. Knocked it out the park. Absolutely. And, and the way she talked as a mom and as parents, how they want to teach values to their children and that Donald Trump is unsuitable as a role model for children of America or the world. And I, I just thought the way she put it in very personal parental terms was very, very powerful. Um, and then, you know, I just thought, but the, but the President of the United States, he, no, no one can have such compelling and soaring ideas and you know, he just carries you up and up and up. You're floating. Now tell me, I mean, I, we're, we, we, had, we started our show out by talking about all the celebrity sightings you see only at the Democratic National Convention. You've been up and down this convention, you've probably been on all the floors. Who was you? Did you have a celebrity crush that you saw this week? Uh oh! I just saw <laughs> Rob Reiner. He was in the yeah. I was and I said to to Rob Reiner, I said, I fear Archie Bunker is a is a Trump guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. Archie probably wants to make America great again. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, so now, 
this convention, in a couple hours from now, Hillary will speak, the balls will drop, they will take the stage away, and every, all these delegates will go back home, and that's when the real work starts. That's and exactly I mean, a lot right. of people have said that, oh, I mean, there's some people at home that it's gonna be a close election. I don't think that. I think we're gonna have to work our tails off. What do you think? Oh, we cannot take anything for granted, but if we do turn out, turn out, turn out, those are the three things we have to do, turn out, turn out, and turn out. Of all the people that have been so profoundly disrespected by Donald Trump, we win. So it's a matter of mobilizing women, immigrants, Mexican immigrants, um, Muslims, LGBT community, and don't because don't forget about Pence. That was his pick for. That's for, true. For, and here, and for the VP. crazy part about the Pence pick, um, Congresswoman, is that when he offered the job to John Kasich, he said, "I will give, I will put you in charge of everything." He's like, "That's literally what he said to John Kasich." Donald Trump said to John Kasich, "You know, you can handle foreign policy. You can hand, you can be the head of our domestic policy. I'll just sort of sit in the Oval Office and make America great again by plating uh, in gold." And, and tweet. Right? And tweet. Yeah. Right. So that means he probably made the same deal to Pence, meaning that Michael Pence, one of the most far right conservative Absolutely. governors that there is, will be running this country. Right. It, it, I mean that that is such a horrifying idea. It's ominous. And and there will be Supreme Court justices who represent that view that will not only affect my daughter and my granddaughters, but their children as well going into the view. Is it can't happen. I mean my view is we have to win. And that's why all of these constituencies that have been so hurt, all the minority communities, everybody has to come out. But we're gonna have great surrogates. The the President of the United States is going to be out there working for Hillary Clinton. We're going to have people all over this country. You know, at my breakfast at the Illinois delegation, the uh, one of the people said, I had to Google um, the names of the people that were during prime time at the Republican convention. Nobody well, knew who Scott, they I mean, were. They did have Scott Bayo. I mean, with all credit aside, all they right. had Scott Bayo. They all had right. Scott Bayo. All right. One. <laughs> one. True. Yeah, you know, but you know, we we, ha we demonstrated really. This is what democracy looked like, aside from a few crazy people or you know fanatic people that were yelling. The, I believe that we emerged from here as a unified party, ready to go to work, roll up our sleeves, not just to defeat Donald Trump. For me, it's so much more than that. It's about electing not a woman, this woman. President, and I think we'll be mistaken woman. if we don't talk about, and you're a member of Congress, so you know what it means to be in the minority. The down ballot races, making sure Democrats take back the Senate. There's about 50 seats that we need to win, which is a tough order in the House to take back control. 30. 30. We have to maintain eight or nine, I think is what the last time I yeah, saw. Yeah, even of our vulnerables. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, those races are important as well. And so if you're not going to turn out because you might, you might be a Bernie bot and you know, Hillary didn't do it for you. You turn out for Russ Feingold. And, fine, and, and, fine, I take it. I'll take it. She said, um, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I obviously, I, I want everybody not to squander their presidential vote, and I, I'm hoping by the time we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up a meeting when I get home. It's already in the works with some of the Bernie leaders. And the first thing I'm gonna say to them is thank you and congratulations. I love it. And don't snatch defeat from the jaws, the jaws of victory. of victory. How long have I said that on the show, guys? I say that almost every week. Democrats were so good at snatching defeat out of the jaws of victory.